Good morning. It is Friday and I have just come up to the Chatsworth estate here in Derbyshire and uh, it's been the most beautiful, beautiful start to the morning. It's been so misty and foggy and as I was driving up down all the wonderful winding roads that lead up here, all the trees were just covered in red and yellow and orange leaves and we just went through this tunnel of colour. It was, oh, it was so dreamy. Um, I was listening to um, an artist called Seb Deliza. I don't know if you've heard of her. She's Iranian Dutch, I think, um, a brilliant singer. And she has a song called Blucid, which came on just as I was going through these through these roads. And oh my God, it was the most dreamy moment. It was so good. I wish I could have filmed the drive, but I'm on a little solo venture, unfortunately, so I couldn't film it this morning. Anyway, right, let me take you to Chatsworth. I thought today I would take you up to Haddon Hall, which is my favourite house in the entire world. It's absolutely spectacular. Um, but just a few minutes drive from there is the beautiful house of Chatsworth, which if you watched uh, is it last week, possibly the week before, um, the episode then where I showed you around Hardwick Hall, um, you might remember that I mentioned Chatsworth House as being the first home of um, Bessa Hardwick. So I thought while I'm in the area, I shall take you for a little walk around the grounds, just show you Chatsworth House. I'm not going to go in today because it is on my list for Vlogmas. I'm planning on doing Vlogmas because when these houses are all decorated for Christmas, it's absolutely amazing. So um, yeah, I plan on I plan on taking you around for December. So today I just thought I'd come and have a little wander around the grounds and just show you briefly what the house looks like. Um, if you've watched Pride and Prejudice, you might um, you might recognise it from there as it was Mr Darcy's house. Um, yeah, it's just, it's such a lovely house. Now, if you watched the episode in Hardwick Hall, you might recall I mentioned that Mary Queen of Scots was imprisoned at Chatsworth House. And this building here in front of us, this platform, was apparently erected so that she could take her exercise outdoors. So that is purely there, apparently, for Mary Queen of Scots. Also there, right in the distance on the hill, you might be able to see the hunting lodge. Now that is the only surviving original piece of architecture from when Bessa Hardwick built Chatsworth State. And if you fancy, you can even rent it out. It's a holiday home now. Well, before I head off, I wanted to head to Enza, which is one of the Chatsworth Estate Villages. There's three in total, Pilsley, Bealey and Edinza. And it is here that I wanted to pop to because uh, for any American viewers, the sister of your former president, JFK, is buried here, Kathleen Kennedy. She married the then Duke of Devonshire. So she is buried in this lovely little churchyard. And here it is, in loving memory of Kathleen, 1920 to 1948, in memory of John Kennedy, President of the United States of America, who visited this grave on the 29th of June, 1963. So she's buried here at the back of the church with all the other Devonshires. She's surrounded by her family, English family anyway, with a lovely view looking back to the church in Enza. It's a really nice little spot. I quite like how plain it is 
You could quite easily walk past this and not even realise. It's lovely that they've erected this as well, just to let everyone know that John, John F. Kennedy, did actually visit his sister to pay his respects. Right, it's starting to rain now, so I'm going to head back to the car and hopefully head over to Haddon Hall. Well, I just pulled up at Haddon Hall and it is closed. So, uh, no Haddon Hall for us today, I'm afraid. It won't open until the middle of November, but that's fine because um, I wanted to come here. It's on my Vlogmas list as well. Haddon looks spectacular at Christmas. So I will be back for Christmas, I guess. Um, but just down the road, there's Bakewell and there is Ashford in the Water, which is one of my favorite villages here in Derbyshire. So I will take you there now, I think, instead. Well, I made it to Ashford and it's chucking it down. It stopped raining now, I put the umbrella down. Um, so here in Ashford in the Water, it is such a quaint village that not too many people know about. I feel like um, the Peak District and Derbyshire in general are still mildly left off of people's travel plans. Um, I'm not sure why. I suppose it's a bit further to get to than some other places um, from London. Although well, saying that, Lake District gets a ton of people. Um, but anyway. Or maybe people just don't know how beautiful it is around here. Don't know. Either way, I'm not complaining. It's nice and quiet and I quite like it that way to be honest. Um, but anyway, I want to show you around and show you how beautiful Derbyshire is because it's just such a wonderful, wonderful county. It really is lovely. Now this here is my favourite spot in the whole of Derbyshire to come for a picnic. Every summer we have to come down here Bakewell's just down the road. You can go and pick up a load of lovely goodies, including Bakewell tarts and Bakewell puddings. Don't confuse the two, because they're very different. But we will go, go there and pick up loads of lovely food and sit under these trees and have a wonderful picnic. Especially in the summer months, it's lovely because you can put your feet in the river, a little paddle. I've seen the swans down there with all the, all the signets. Can you see? Oh, so lovely. But what I did want to tell you is that that bridge there has been nominated by Visit England, the National Tourist Board, as the best bridge in the country to play a game of poo sticks. So anyone who's read Winnie the Pooh as a kid will know all about a game of poo sticks. Um, so yeah, that's the best bridge in England to come and play poo sticks. So whenever we come with Heidi, we always have to have a little game, which is nice. And aside from that, it's also famous as being one of the most photographed bridges in the country. It's a really, really lovely old bridge. Gosh, it's feeling so autumnal around here. The amount of colour is spectacular. I'm absolutely loving it. I'm so glad we came. So, this wasn't on the plan. I am so happy. So Ashford is a really small place. There's just a few sort of cute cottages. There's that lovely church there. That has got some very rare things inside. I'll have to see if it's open and I can take you in. Well, it looks like it is open, so I'll have to go and have a look. So inside, they have these things called virgin crowns, which were made out of paper in the medieval times and went all the way up through till sort of 1800s, I think, possibly even the early 90s. And they were placed on the head of virgins when they died. So there they are, an incredibly rare survival. And this church has four of them hanging here from the ceiling. It's believed that the custom of bridal crowns came from Scandinavia. 
the maidens, being denied a bridal crown in life, were honoured in their death with a virgin's crown. The garlands are made from white paper, which is why they're quite a rare survival. The oldest garland in this church was for Anne Howard, who died on April 12, 1747, aged just 21. The last of the garlands was for Elizabeth Blackwell, who is believed to have drowned in the river in 1801. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and if you have, please do like and subscribe to our channel, and if you can, please support us on Patreon. Next week, we are taking you to the Cotswolds, to one of my favourite villages in the entire country. See you then!